When looking at the setup, you wouldn't expect the PC powering it to be based on an Intel Core i5-2500. You probably would expect it to be powered by a GTX 1080 Ti. Well, the thing is, both of these statements are true. The GPU alone is worth more than the CPU, motherboard, RAM, case, hard drive and PSU combined. You may think this is stupid, and to be honest, you'd definitely be right. Thing is, I'm fucking tripe boy, and tripe does some stupid ass things on this channel, like taking so many breaks to kill the channel. So today we'll be taking a look at just what happens when you pair a £30 CPU from 2011 with a brand new £800 graphics card. Now it's important when investigating stupid things to take a step back and see the situation from a broader perspective. We're not looking to see if there's a bottleneck, it's very obvious there will be. No, what we're looking for is how much of a bottleneck there is, and whether someone with an older rig would even have that much of a hard time sticking a powerful and modern card in their system. So let's look at numbers before I'll step down to bottleneck county. Okay, so previously I ran an i7-5960X at 4.6GHz. This CPU blew away my previous Ryzen 7 1800X in gaming and video production, and it's more than enough to handle a 1080 Ti, especially when overclocked. With Battlefield 1, because that's a game nicely influenced by CPU cores and speed, on my X99 rig I'd get usually around 140fps on average. This is maxed out at 3440x1440 on a RAID 0 SSD config, which would alleviate hard drive bottlenecks by the way. This average is across vanilla Battlefield 1 maps after 30 minutes of playtime on each one. Okay, switching to our 2011 rig and things seriously start to slow down. You may be surprised by how much things slow down in fact. On average in the vanilla Battlefield 1 maps, the FPS dropped from 140 FPS all the way down to 50 FPS. And it's not even like a smooth 50 FPS, it feels more like a rocky 40. The mouse movements are jerky and don't register fully or jump up and down constantly. It'll dip below 40 quite often, you'll randomly get moments where it'll run smoothly at about 60 or 70 FPS, and then back to stuttery 50 FPS. It's very strange and a clear indication of a huge bottleneck. But perhaps things are better on PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. I'm gonna die. Yep, I'm dead. Get me up, Stop. fam. There. Testing Battlegrounds proved to be a bit of a fickle process. Even on my 5960X rig, the FPS really varies and testing honestly doesn't show anything reliable, but the story is pretty similar. But wait, perhaps it's not that different, and why? Well, because the difference this time is nowhere near as bad as Battlefield's difference. Before, on average FPS, it would be nice and smooth, usually in the 80s. In the starting area, lowest I'd ever see was about 55, with the highs um, like mid-game of 150, usually in the north of the map. And swapping over to the beast that is the 2500, things aren't too bad. I mean, yeah, the FPS has dropped, now it hovers in the 50s on average, staying in the 70s in areas where there's not a lot going on, but the mouse issues, stuttering and unplayable lag is completely gone. Sometimes I'll play a game with a bit of stutter, sometimes I'll play a game where it will stutter or freeze every few minutes, particularly at the start when it has to stream in all of the buildings, but that's kind of it. Gunplay, although not as smooth, is still doable. I've gotten that cheeky chicken dinner on this rig, no problem. Battlegrounds is very playable. The story rings the same for CSGO, just without the stutter at all. CSGO doesn't require much GPU power, so perhaps that's why the bottleneck may not be as prominent, but dropping from a locked 300 FPS to 130 FPS on average, the game is still fun to enjoy with not too much difference when switching between the two. Don't get me wrong, it does feel smoother with the i7 by far, but this is easily the most playable experience on this PC with just a minor reduction in frame rate, but not stability. Bit of a boring case example there, but let's move on to a GPU intensive game. Let's finish off on The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 is a stunning game, one I have covered in a lot of my videos in the past. With the 5960X, it was business as usual, getting a solid 90 to 100 FPS maxed out at 3440x1440 besides hairworks. The game did have some occasional stutter, which wasn't present on my 5820K, 
Perhaps that was because of a patch, but there was some minor stutter present on the 5960X. Taking a look at the i5 results, and things completely change. The FPS is not only stable, more stable than the 5960X, but also really high. Before we saw 90 FPS on average, but now I'm getting easily above 60 FPS at all times with no stuttering at all. There's a bit of stuttering when you first load into the game, but that's due to the slow hard drive and not necessarily the CPU. In fact, the FPS usually stays at about 70, which is really enjoyable. This is just a testament to how well CD Projekt Red optimises their games. Looking at CPU usage in Witcher 3, the game will take up about 60% of the CPU, so overall usage will be about 80-90% max. Whereas with other games previously mentioned, the games will take up something like 90% usage by themselves. So the dip in performance isn't necessarily a bottleneck per se, just worse performance in general because it's an older and less powerful CPU. Bear in mind all of these tests were done at 3440x1440, a resolution not far off 4K. I have found that lowering the resolution introduces more stutter and therefore an even less enjoyable experience, even if the overall FPS is higher. In this case, if you find yourself with a high-end GPU but a lower-end CPU, you should get the GPU to do as much work as possible so it's not demolishing the slower CPU with tasks, it just can't handle as quickly. I recommend using Dynamic Super Resolution or VSR if you're on AMD to increase the rendered resolution, not only giving a prettier gameplay experience but also a more stable one. I recommend this especially if you're on a lower resolution display like 1080p or even 1440p. This was an absolute extreme example and only done for fun and educational purposes. If you've ever been in a situation like this, I can wholeheartedly recommend you upgrade your CPU as soon as you can because you're missing out on a lot of frames if you don't. Soon I'll be comparing the difference between the i5-2500 against the slightly more expensive i7-3770 and we'll also be pairing it with a 1080 Ti and we'll be testing if that can provide a much more functional experience without spending much more. So be sure to tune in next video for that. If you did enjoy watching this video, then do show your appreciation by tapping that like button. I love your face, and I will see you guys in the next one. Terra.